Hey there, my name's Remorse, and I'm a player for Vex Gaming in this season of Pro League. Now, what I have for you today, guys, is the much-requested Blackbeard Guide. Now, Blackbeard is a operator that I have a lot of experience with, as he's the operator that I played exclusively for this season of Pro League. I have many, many hours on him, and I really know the ins and outs of him so far, so hopefully we'll be able to improve your Blackbeard gameplay today, and let's go ahead and hop on into his customization. Now, first thing you might notice is, whoa! You're using the white headgear, you idiot. You're putting a target on your head. And I say to you, wrong. And here is why. Here's why I think that you're wrong if you think that. Now, Blackbeard, as an operator, is going to primarily take long-range engagements, and he's going to be sitting outside of windows, and really only exposing his head and a portion of his shoulders. Because of this, and because of the way that the game's lighting works, and how bright it is when, as a defender, you look outside, Coupled with the fact that his shield has a pretty bad glare on it when you look out to make it really more difficult to see than it already is, it makes it gives you just that one extra bit of an advantage here. Maybe it might take the enemy just a teensy bit longer to recognize where you are, but that small advantage is something that I'm going to take here. Now, yes, I will concede that this might be placebo, but I have noticed a little bit easier time when I'm peeking windows and opponents have told me that it's hard to see me when I'm using this and it looks kind of cool I like it I think it gives me a little bit of an advantage you don't have to buy it it's not gonna be game-changing but I don't know if it's an advantage I'm gonna utilize it so that's that now let's hop into his loadout here now he has two main rifles here the MK17 CQB and the SR25 marksman rifle now, to be perfectly blunt, you're always going to be picking the MK-17 CQB rifle here. And the reason is not because the SR-25 is bad. In fact, it's not. It's honestly one of the better DMRs that are currently in the game. The one that comes closest to it is Buck's DMR. Now, it's a good weapon with good damage and relatively easy recoil. It's just that the MK-17 will do you much better in nearly every situation that you use Blackbeard in. Now... Blackbeard is going to want to be focusing on holding windows and sometimes long-range engagements. And the SR-25 is weak when you start getting in those close CQB scenarios where you might have to take a sight with your team or if you're just going to be pushing in from a window. Because of that, the MK-17, because of that and because of the MK-17's ability to do long-range and close-range fire just as easily, you're going to want to pick it. Now, the Deagle is a wonderful gun even though its iron sights really aren't the best it's really fun to use and it's really your only option so I guess you're just gonna have to get used to that and we go down to the gadgets we have the breach charges and we have the stun nades and I'm going to suggest that you always pick the stun nades and here's why as a Blackbeard player your goal is not going to be to be the person that goes in and breaches everything your goal is to be the biggest pain in the ass that you can possibly be you want to be a constant irritant to the other team you want to always draw attention to yourself so that your so that your team can execute whatever plan they want to with less pressure on themselves so you want to be sitting on a window or playing long angles and throwing in stun grenades and always drawing the enemy's attention to you, or you should be delaying them in some way. So because of that, you're always want to go. You're always going to want to grab the stun grenade or flash hider or flash bang, flash bang grenade, not the flash hider, um, whenever you can. Unless you have some super specific strategy where you just absolutely have to take the breach charge. But to honestly, guys, I don't think that'll ever happen. Pick the flash bangs. Always grab the flashbangs. Now let's go ahead and hop into the attachments here. Now, I'm going to suggest to you the ACOG, the flash hider, and the vertical grip. And you're going to want to grab the ACOG purely because this gun is really great for long-range engagements. And you're really only going to be exposing just your head and the tips of your shoulders most of the time. And that's going to mean that you're going to be a little bit further away from the enemy than you would otherwise normally be. So that means that you're going to be at somewhat of a disadvantage with the other just times one sights. Even though his recoil might be a little bit easier to control with these, since you're going to be firing in three shot bursts, it shouldn't really affect you that much. Now speaking of those three shot bursts, we're going to grab the flash hider specifically because of that. You're not going to touch the compensator and you're not going to touch the suppressor. They honestly, they don't give you the advantage that the flash hider does. And that's the fact that the flash hider will allow you to fire three shot bursts 
very accurately. You're never, 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 and I really can't emphasize this enough, never shoot more than three to four bullets in a single burst fire. If you're firing more than that, honestly, you're in a panic type scenario and nothing will help you there. It means that you have put yourself in a bad spot. It means that the enemy has outflanked you or something like that. You're going to want to run the flash hider because that is the most efficient way to run this rifle. You're going to want to always fire in three shot bursts. It makes his rifle very controllable, very accurate, and it's very powerful this way. Because remember, his damage is 52, which means that in most cases you just need three bullets to down someone if you're shooting in the chest. And that's why I always advocate for that three shot burst. So just always remember, three shot burst, happy MK17. It's, it's going to be the best scenario for you. Now, next, we're going to run the vertical grip purely because, well, I mean, you don't really have an option, and it makes his recoil a little bit more manageable. So, it's just kind of like a freebie. Like, just grab it. And the under barrel, we're not going to run anything because we're not noobs. Come on, guys. You're not going to hip fire Blackbeard's rifle. It defeats the point of the shield. In fact, don't don't hip fire anything. Just just don't do it. Just this. This is not real. This is a fake. This is... This is bait. This is trying to get you to do something dumb. Don't, just don't. No. <laughs> Always no. There's never a good time for a laser sight on any assault character that uses a rifle. Now for the skins, I don't, I mean, it doesn't really matter. I mean, sure, you could say there's some metagaming to an extent like, oh, I'll use some white skin. That'll make me harder to see. But, hey man, I like the gold engraved. That's I don't know, personal preference. It's my favorite thing on there. And you're always wanna go and grab that lucky four leaf clover because you need the one taps. You gotta you gotta roll the dice and pray to the one tap gods that you'll be good to go. So that's that's that I will say is hundred percent placebo, but four leaf clover, lucky one taps. And that is it for his loadout, guys. So let's go ahead and hop into the game here. Alright, so what we'll be doing here is, although that the video in the background, I mean, you guys requested some gameplay videos in the background, so I'm not just wandering around a map and stuff, so that's what we're going to do here. I'm just going to have a couple video clips playing here, they might not necessarily reference some stuff, but it's something for you to watch while, I guess, you listen to some of the tips that I'm giving here. Now, as a Blackbeard player, you really have three main steps to perform to execute a successful round. Now, the first and foremost is going to be the prep phase. As a Blackbeard player, you want to know who is on the other team. This is very important for how you're going to play. You need to know how many shotgun players there are, how many C4 people, how many, how many people are running C4, and if the people are roaming. Now, if people are roaming, you want to confirm if they're peeking or not, because if someone is peeking, you want to switch your spawn to where they are peeking, because that's a free kill for you. A peeker will never have the advantage on a Blackbeard that knows where they're coming from, and it's a free kill to instantaneously put your team into a 5v4 advantage. So make sure you always keep track of your drone, don't just send it into a site to die, follow the roamers, and find out where they're going. Now, the secondary one is going to be on the approach, on the approach to the building. You're going to want to keep your eyes peeled for any late peekers. You're going to want to make sure that you're approaching with the team and you're going to be on your way to set up to your location that you have predetermined. For me, if we're playing, let's say, Canal, for example, I'm going to want to go up onto the B windows and be a pain in the ass there, maybe get some to flush some people out. And you're also going to want to consider that you need to be on an angle to where your team can push the enemy towards you so that you can get an easy kill. And the third and final thing that you're going to want to do, which is when you're actually shooting the rifle, so remember we have three steps, we have three different phases here, the prep phase, the approaching the building, and then when you're actually going to be shooting an enemy. Now, when you're actually about to shoot an enemy, but like before you end up peeking the window or peeking the corner here, I guess you could call this the peeking phase, I suppose, um, you're, going to want to rem you're going to want to look up on the scoreboard, not, and maybe not pull it up, but just remember who's alive, are they shotgunners, do they have C4? Now, the shotgun and the C4 are Blackbeard's nemesis. Nine times out of ten, a shotgun player will always beat Blackbeard, especially if it's an auto shotty. Those are true terrors. You need to make sure that you don't put yourself anywhere near that shotgun player. I personally avoid them like the plague. You need to make sure that you are set up opposite of them, or at least in some angle where you will always have the advantage. And you're going to want to drone in to confirm this. Make sure that, hey, whatever angle I'm going to go sit next to, 
doesn't have a shotgunner, some auto shotty user, literally prone or crouched next to the window waiting for me. Because they will just blow your shield off in two shots and then kill you, if you haven't died already <laughs> in that spray. So, once you go to finally take that shot off, you're going to remember that you have patience. You need to have patience whenever you're firing a Blackbeard rifle, the DMK-17 CQB. And the reason being is you have a shield in front of your face. Now this is accounting for the fact that you already made sure that there's no shotgunner near you and that you're in a spot where you can't be C-forward. Take your time. Line up the shot because you have the time to line up your shot. Your enemy doesn't have that convenience. So make sure that all your shots land. Be patient and pray to the one-taps. And all right, guys, that does it for this Blackbeard guide. Hope I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from it. And if you enjoyed this video, you liked it, please leave a like. And if you hated it for some reason, this was like the worst video I ever saw, leave a dislike. But please let me know in the comments what went wrong. What made you hate this video? Uh, let me know so I can improve it or make changes or an addendum into the either on the page of the little pop-up box or on, in the description. Just let me know what I did wrong or something I can improve on. Or even in general, even if you liked the video but you thought of something that I could change or do, do differently, please let me know so that I can improve it in the future. And if you loved, loved the video, this was the most amazing thing you've ever seen, or if you've been following me lately and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Please, please, please subscribe, guys. It really helps me grow the channel, and I'll be having some more videos now that we're not no longer in the Pro League right now. It's not that we're out of the Pro League. It's just we're in the off-season right now. I have more time to make videos, so hopefully they'll be a little bit more consistent. I realize that I missed last week's video, and I'm so, so sorry for that. I, this video should have been last week, and I know that I messed that up, but hopefully... Hopefully you guys will be excited for the next one, which I plan I plan for this next one to be all about roaming. How to roam effectively, what you should be doing as a roamer or lurker, whatever you like to call it, and what your main goals are. Your do's and don'ts, essentially how to be the best roamer that you can be. And I'll try to put as much experience as I have from the Pro League and try and condense it into a video and... Hopefully you guys enjoy that. But anyways, guys, that's all for today, and hopefully I'll see you guys next week.